I've done a few pieces before on HIV and AIDS. Stories about people I've lost, stories about seeing the AIDS memorial quilt. And those are very personal to me and very important. But they're about the past. Today I want to talk about the future of AIDS. In the past, when I was a young man just coming out of the closet, an HIV diagnosis was a death sentence. So many people died from terrible opportunistic infections. And there just wasn't much you or the doctors could do. Just hold their hands and hope that this time wouldn't be the end. That has changed dramatically. There are treatments now, one-a-day pills, that can suppress the virus and keep many people with HIV healthy for decades. Some studies indicate that if you're a 20-year-old HIV-positive gay man who starts antiretroviral therapy, you can expect to live on the average to the age of 77, the same as an HIV-negative man. You may have some extra health problems, but overall your quality of life can be very good. This is not an excuse to give up on safer sex. The pills can have side effects. Some of those extra health problems can be really bad. Not everybody gets the same benefit out of the treatments. But you know what? If you live through the worst of the AIDS crisis, these treatments look, look like nothing short of a miracle. We also need to remember that gay men in America are in a better position than some. They get tested more often than most people and may be better plugged into AIDS organizations. On the other hand, poor people, people of color, drug abusers, people in third world nations, whether they're gay or not, they're not doing nearly as well. But the treatments exist, and hopefully we'll get better at getting them to all the people who need them. And now there's something new on the scene. It's called PrEP, which stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. This is a medication for HIV negative people, which makes it less likely that they'll be infected by HIV if they're exposed, much less likely. The best known and most studied form of PrEP is a pill called Truvada. If you take it once a day, it cuts down on the chance of, uh, your chance of contracting HIV, according to some studies, by 99%. That's amazing. Certainly the greatest advance in AIDS prevention that I've seen in 30 years. Again, it's not a reason to get complacent or give up on condoms and other forms of safer sex. It's not perfect. You can be on it and still get HIV. You have to take the pill every day or it's not as effective. It has side effects, although for most people they're minor. And of course, there are a lot of other sexually transmitted diseases besides HIV out there, and they can be dangerous. A condom can still help you avoid those. Truvada doesn't. It's best to look at it as an extra layer of protection, not the be-all and end-all. And Truvada is still quite expensive. There are financial programs to help out people who can't afford it, but we're a long way off from getting it to everyone who needs it. There are other developments in the treatment and prevention of AIDS. Researchers are tra testing tra vaccines. They're testing actual cures. None of them work yet, but the science is changing so quickly that we can have some hope for the future. Depending on how old you are, this may just sound like a public service announcement. The more you know, a lot of it may be old hat. But if you're my age, you may remember a time when AIDS was a horrifying mystery that no one could solve. When people, a person could watch his entire group of friends die from it one by one. When the government and the drug companies didn't seem to care and it just looked like there was no hope, and now there is. I have a hope for the future of AIDS. No more AIDS. Prevention, treatment, maybe even a cure. Imagine a day when we've wiped out HIV the way we've wiped out smallpox. Imagine the party we'll throw. I hope I'm there to see it. And if not me, that's my hope for some of you watching this today. No more AIDS. Until then, be smart and be careful. We love to get mail from you. Email us at comments at outlookvideo.org. To contact us by phone, call 408-293-3040, extension 205. 
visit our website at outlookvideo.org. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Outlook Video. And connect with us at facebook.com slash Outlook Video. There are still ongoing advancements in medication to fight HIV. Dana Pizzuti is a board certified physician in internal medicine and has over 28 years of pharmaceutical industry experience, working for companies such as Hoffman LaRoche, Abbott Laboratories, Bristol Myers Squibb, and Johnson and Johnson. Welcome to the program, Dr. Pizzuti. Thank you so much for inviting me, Ajay. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, and I would like to say first that you and I are personal friends. Right. We've known each other for several years, <laughs> and I'm thrilled that you were able to come in and do this interview. Thank you, my pleasure. Now I know that you've been in the fight against HIV and AIDS your whole career. And it started in New York City uh, when you were in your interns, right. internship, in correct, mm -hmm. in your training. Um, what was it like back then in research and, medi and medic medicine? Well, it was really uh, a very um, disturbing time way back then because uh, the epidemic was just getting started and it was really a death sentence for anybody that was infected with HIV. There were no therapies and it uh, you know, became really uh, uh, very challenging to just watch this happen. I decided to go into the pharmaceutical industry after I uh, went through fellowship training in infectious disease and that was in the 80s when uh, the therapies were first being developed to be able to attack the HIV virus. So when we first started hearing about HIV and research was doing its uh, trials and such like, what were some of those medications? Because it was really a death sentence. Well, the early medications were nucleoside inhibitors like AZT and DDI, and they themselves were effective partially against HIV. But the real breakthrough came in the mid-90s when the protease inhibitor compounds became available and were um, uh, developed and they were put into combinations with the previous drugs and all of a sudden we saw that you were able to completely suppress the replication of the virus. And at that time it really was astounding because all of a sudden the mortality rate went down and people realized that they would feel better as long as they took their medications. Mm -hmm. And so we really kind of went from that place of being a death sentence to people now dying of other causes. Well, that was the beginning of what they called combination therapy. And then the efforts of the industry after that were to try to put the best combinations together and to try to get it to be one pill once a day, almost like a vitamin, so that as long as you took your medication, you should be able to suppress the virus and you'll die of other things. And so over the years, there have been a lot of advancements in the different compounds and the different classes of compounds that have been used in combination. And so now there are multiple options for patients with different combinations depending on what works best for them. Fantastic. Yeah. So where are we going now? What's well, coming? Well, some of the more interesting uh, uh, efforts right now are more around prevention. Now, people have been trying to get an HIV vaccine for a long time, but that's really been uh, a, a significant challenge, and there hasn't been much progress so far on that. But what we're trying to do right now is get to the point where we prevent new infections. And so there are two main uh, avenues right now that are pretty hot. One is in treatment as prevention. And what that is trying to do is to identify as many infected people as possible and get them all on treatment so that their viral load goes down and they won't pass the virus on to somebody else. Okay, and mm -hmm. so then that becomes sort of like a community objective to try to get everybody in treatment and then no new infections. So that's called treatment as prevention. Sure. The other thing is pre-exposure prophylaxis. And this is where you would take a medication to prevent yourself from getting infected. And that would be particularly helpful to people who are um, exposed to um, uh, infected you know, individuals. individuals, people who are sex workers and, uh, and involved in professions where that <laughs> is a, risk. You know, a possible uh, outcome. And then other times it's with couples where one of the partners is infected and the other one doesn't want to be infected. And so that person would take medication to try to prevent that. 
Wow, well, this has really been insightful. It's nice to know that we've kind of turned a corner. We haven't ended, but we're, we're getting there. So thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Um, I'd like to hope that you'll come back and visit us again. I know sure. you and I have several other things that we can discuss. <laughs> we sure can. <laughs> but on a lighter note, and coming up next, the San Francisco Lesbian Gay Freedom Band presents Dance Along Nutcracker. You're watching Outlook Video.